Okay, hello. I'm going to get this started. Uh, I assume that I am live. Safari is not being very friendly to me today, but I feel like I am live and I, and I am a floating head. Hello, hello, everybody. I mean, I have to use the traditional introduction. Hi, YouTubers. Welcome to my, welcome to my show. <laughs> I'm a floating head today because I think it is fun. <laughs> All right, let's let's get started with stuff. Um, first, I'll put up my green screen. <laughs> now that the green screen is up, I'm going to switch to Keynote. Am I going to switch to Keynote? Yes, I am switching to Keynote. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the cool stuff, the cool stuff live stream for this May twenty seventh. Um, today we're going to be working on optimizing, like optimizing the hash method call, um, kind of. But you'll see. I guess it is a hash method call, but we're going to optimize it in very, very particular situations and. We'll talk about why that is in this presentation. Also, I have a guest with me today, John Hawthorne, who I will bring on, but not right now, John. Not yet. <laughs> and it is also very fun for him because he sees he sees all of my green screen where you just see everyone else just sees a floating head. Like, okay, anyway. Oh, that's not my worst keynote. Come here, keynote. All right. Let's do this. Uh, so last week I was at RailsConf. It was a ton of fun. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, if you weren't at RailsConf, please see the please see the online version if you can. It was really, really fun, and there were a lot of good talks. I enjoyed it. It was in Portland, which is south of me. I live in Seattle. It was very fun to go to Portland. It's basically like uh, Portland is basically a mini Seattle. <laughs> Which is not true. It's not true. I just like to say that to annoy the Portland people. We stayed at the famous like French boutique hotel, the Double Tree. Really enjoyed it. It was quite fancy. Um, <laughs> let's see. Last time, last time we were doing cool stuff live stream, we were looking at object shapes. Uh, and that was a really fun, that was a really fun broadcast. So if you didn't catch that one, please go see, please go see that. It, I believe it is recorded and on my channel so you can see it. Um, today we're going to talk about hashes though. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of like hashes, kind of, kind of hashes. Um, specifically we're going to be looking at code that looks like this. So like when you call the hash method on an array, um, but we'll see why we'll see why a little bit later. This is this is the code that we're gonna we're gonna speed up today. Uh, but first, I want to cover a little bit of like hash basics. So a hash table is just a data structure that uh, lets you look up values by a key. So typically, if you're using an array, it, it lets you look up values by a key. Whereas if we were comparing this to an array, like arrays let you look up by an integer index. Hashes allow you to look up. Uh, allow you to look up by basically any object. So like you've probably seen stuff that's like, okay, we're gonna look up, you know, look up a value by a, a string or look up a value by a symbol, but you can really use any, like any object in Ruby, any object is fine, uh, as, a, as a key that is. Of course you can store any object as a value, but we're specifically looking at keys to hash keys today. Uh, and when we like when we actually store the object in the hash table, you can you can kind of think of the hash table as like a really big array. So we're still storing stuff in an, in an array, I guess. Uh, but we have to like calculate where to put the stuff into that array. So we do that based on the the um, hash key for some the object that we're sticking in there. So for example, in this case, like we'll calculate that maybe the string foo goes at hash index one, the, just as an example, and then maybe like colon bar goes at hash index four. Uh, and this is this is just an example. They could go they could go anywhere, but the way that Ruby figures out where it goes, like part of the part of the way it figures that out is via the hash method. So it'll call dot hash on the object that is the key. 
and that method will return an integer and then the hash algorithm uses that integer to figure out where it should put that object in in that big array so we can look at like we can look at the hash method on all types of objects every object has this has this method as you can see here so like we can call it on strings integers whatever so everything has one now the implementation of the hash method in most cases like most objects will use the object id to calculate to to return that value uh, and you can see here in this example like our when our object id is stable then the hash value it returns is also stable so when we create a new object like clearly new object id new hash key it's not not very surprising uh, symbols have a stable object ID, so if we use the same symbol, and there, there are some caveats to this, which I'm sure maybe John will teach me about, hopefully, or not. I don't, it's maybe not relative, but anyway, the symbols have a, a stable object ID, so of course they have a stable, stable hash as well. Now, strings are a little bit different. Um, strings base their hash value on the bytes that are in the string itself. So it'll, it'll look at the bytes in the string and then calculate the hash value based off those bytes. So in this example, like we have two different instances of the foo string. And even though they both have different object IDs, they end up having the same hash value. And that's because it's based on the contents of the string rather than the object itself. So since, uh, since it just like the hash table just calls dot hash on something, clearly we can define a hash method. So we did that in this in this case, we have like a class foo, we define hash, it just returns 10. And of course, like when we allocate, when we allocate new instances of foo, it, the hash method returns the same value. So not, again, shouldn't be too surprising. Um, what's interesting is it's possible for different objects to have the same hash. Uh, the hash value is actually based, we have a random seed when Ruby starts up. So it's very like it's, it's definitely possible for random objects to just end up with the same hash value. Uh, and of course, like this implementation that you saw on the previous slide, we, we added a method to force them to have the same hash value. But when objects have the same hash value, that causes them to have a collision and we have to deal with that collision. So a collision occurs when two objects have the same hash value. So for example, when we like when we have a collision, so here we have an example foo with a hash value of one. Uh, when we insert, like on this first insertion, it'll say, oh, okay, we need to put that in here. Uh, we need to put this at index one. Uh, Colin is asking any reason why the hash can be either negative or positive, just to have a wider range of available numbers. Uh, it's, I believe the number is actually unsigned it's just that, so we're, we're using the sign bit, but when it gets converted back to a Ruby integer, it's, it's, it's signed. So we'll, we'll see a negative in there, but it's actually just treated as unsigned under the, under the hood. Anyway, uh, so we hit, like, we insert this first object, and then the second object, we insert that, and it's like, oh, uh, we have the same, like, it has the same hash index. Yeah, you're welcome, of course. Uh, and, Anyone here watching, if you have questions, just put them in the chat, totally happy to answer. Uh, so we, we try to insert this B instance, and B, the B instance, we're like, hey, we need to insert it into index one. There's already an object there, so we have to check, like, are these two objects the same, the same thing? It turns out, no, they're not. So what happens next depends on the hash implementation, but some hashes, they'll say like, okay, we're gonna store this in an array now, and we're just gonna use that in this case. So we'll say like, oh no, they're not the same, so we'll just create an array here, add that, tack that on. Now when we do C, we insert C, C wants to be inserted at index one as well, but it sees like, oh, I can't go there because there's already an object. Am I the same as this A instance? No, I'm not the same as the A instance. And then we check, am I the same as the B instance? No, I'm not the same as the B instance. And then it gets tacked on to the end of the array. So this is like clearly something we don't really wanna do because it's expensive. But anyway, uh, another detail is that when these collisions happen, Ruby will actually call the EQL question mark on the object. So in the case of collisions, we use the EQL, this method to determine whether or not the two instances are the same. And if I remember correctly, the default implementation just checks, compares object IDs. So it'll say like, oh, these two are not the same because they're not the same object ID. But we can implement EQL. So here's an example of using EQL. And you'll see here, 
What's interesting is we have these instances with A, B, and C, and when we do those insertions, you'll see that, like, first we insert A, like, and the EQL question mark, that method prints out stuff. Uh, when we see that, like, we'll say EQL will, will print out some stuff, so we see, like, that when we insert A, we don't see anything. When we insert B, B has to compare itself to A, and then when we insert C, C has to compare itself to um, A and A and B. Oh, hello, welcome. Thank you for coming from Poland. That's so far. Wow. Hello. Uh, all right. So let's see our next our next slide. So uh, the point of right the point of this is you can see you can see how like if we inserted a bunch of objects that had the same hash value, it could get very very expensive because we have to do these we have to do these EQL question marks on every one of the objects. So we really don't want to do that. We want to reduce the number of collisions. And the way we do that is by having a good hash implementation. Now, oh hello, Ufu. Uh, a good hash implementation will combine all the values that the object has that the object has in like stored as references. So, and ideally, you have you would combine them with an XOR, and then you'd multiply each of the hashes by some prime number, and then this would give you a good distribution for that, like for the hash value that's returned. But this sucks. You don't want to write this code, and you don't want to remember this code. So, what I really, really recommend to folks here is to just don't calculate your own hash. Like, do not do that. Uh, instead. What you should do is you should use an array and call the dot hash method on the array. So here's an example. We'll just say like, hey, I want to call it, like I have this foo class. I want to implement the hash method for it. And what I'll do is I'll just create a new array and I'll stick the like stick the members in the array and then just call dot hash dot hash on that array. And actually, uh, Chris Seaton sent a feature request to. Uh, Ruby to say like, hey, this is the way that we should recommend folks implement the hash, the hash method, and that got merged in. So, like, you know, you're free to implement the hash method any way you want to, but this is the way this is the way that I recommend it, and this gets us back to like why, why we're implementing this, like why we want to speed up this particular call. It's because we know we know that folks who implement that hash method they should use this form, and we want to make it as fast as possible. So. They'll use they'll use that form, and in order to do that, we're going to introduce a we're going to introduce a new uh, in this stream today. We're going to introduce a new instruction, new YARV instruction called opt new array. Uh, oh, Sam initiated the conversation. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Sam. Uh, so we're gonna in, we're gonna introduce a new instruction called opt new array hash. Uh, and in this case, what we'll do is we'll say like th this instruction is going to be used for ephemeral ephemeral arrays that have the dot hash method on, called on them. So if you look at this code, you can clearly see like we're not we're never going to use this this array. We're just going to call the dot hash method on it and return that. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a pattern in our instruction sequences that's like we're just going to push a bunch of values, then we're going to call new array, and then we call the hash method on that new array. So the optimization we'd like to make is instead of allocating a new array and calling the hash method on that new array, we're just going to calculate the hash and push that hash method onto the stack. So today we're going to be mucking with the peephole optimizer, probably. And the peephole optimizer is a thing that looks for patterns of instructions and then optimizes those patterns of instructions. So the pattern that we're probably looking for today uh, is new, the new array n instruction. So we say we want to create a new array of some number of values immediately followed by a call to the hash method. And what we'll do is we'll replace those method, we'll replace those two calls or those two instructions with the opt new array hash or this new this new instruction that we're going to um, we're going to make. So with that I would like to introduce John Hawthorne, which I'm going to bring on now. Hello John. Hello. Uh, John is on the the Ruby architecture team at GitHub. Um, I used to work on his team. It was very fun, and now we're working together, just doing 
cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> on the cool stuff live stream. So, um, what was I going to ask you, John? What do you think about the implementation for this? Like, how are we like, how are we going to do this? Um, well, so I think part of part of the reason uh, we decided to do this and knew we could is that there's an instruction that already looks almost exactly like this one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> um, there's already an instruction. So if you build a new array and call dot max or dot min on it, mm -hmm. it will figure out the maximum element of it without building the array. So I think we're doing pretty much the same thing. Okay, so we're 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 going to do what most good programmers do, and that is just copy paste yeah. and implementation. And, and, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and change it a little bit so it so it doesn't look like we copy. <laughs> okay, let's so hold on. Let's hack. I, I say let's hack. Ah, I, I want to show. So I'm, let me get the desktop over here. Okay, now we're on. Now we're on desktop. Let's look at. Um, actually, I kind of wanted to show that off. So what John was saying is, if we do like. Oh, look, I have it in my history. That is amazing. Good for me doing doing <laughs> doing prep work in advance. Wow. Uh, so if you if you look at the instructions, if you dump the instructions for like a and b dot min, if we look at that, you can see right here it it emits a special instruction for calculating the minimum value in this array. So we have this we have this instruction. Actually, I have a funny story about this. Um, so I don't remember how long ago it was, but Evan Phoenix kept putting in his presentations about about like Ruby performance. He would show this like this thing, like this particular code snippet as something to optimize because you can't like normal like we can't see into the machine code for that particular that particular thing where it should be a very simple thing but if we could see into the machine code for it then we could like we could optimize it uh and then after he gave those presentations i guess we introduced a specific like a special instruction for it now so it ruined like <laughs> anytime you talk to him about ruby performance he's like yes what I suggest you target is you target the min method and like, well, no, we can't, it doesn't, stuff change. I can't do that now. <laughs> uh, oh, is there one for max too? There's also max, yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay, so. Is average, is average built into Ruby yet or is that still active support? I don't know. I don't know. Is it? Probably not. Oh, uh, well, well, we don't no, know. No, no, we have no idea. It's, yeah, it's not running it. Um, man, what else was I going to ask you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the 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 nice thing about this, the nice thing about this new instruction that we introduce is it it gives us, I guess, like two optimizations. One, um, we don't do an array allocation, and two, I think we can avoid we can avoid the method lookup too. Is that yes, potentially. Um, okay. Depending on how we want to to handle overrides, I don't know if you want to <laughs> want to cover that now or after we implement it. Let's let's implement it. Let's implement it first, mm -hmm. and then figure out what to do. Like, so I guess what John is talking about is like, what if somebody monkey patches the hash method on array? We gotta like, we gotta handle that. Mm -hmm. like, that's that's a legit thing for people. That's not legit. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not a legit mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> It's a thing people can do, but shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Hash is actually sort of, so in this case, we're going to have to like, Ruby, you can redefine anything. Like you can change addition to multiplication on integers if you want. And generally that will continue working. I think hash is one of the things that only somewhat behaves that way. If you override integer dot hash mm -hmm. and try to access an array full of, or sorry, a, a hash full of integers, with that, it will use the like built-in behavior. The built-in one. Yeah. Oh, oh. So there's a there's a couple places it's maybe slightly cheated. We should do. We should let's try that. I I was actually wondering about that because what if you return like what if you return a value from hash that's not an integer? Like what does it do? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I should actually. You know what I didn't do in advance here that I'm going to do in a different tab is that and while we do that 
Uh, let's. I'm. Oh, you can't see that other tab. Sorry, John. Okay. I'm pulling. I'm. I'm get pulling Ruby. I did not do that in advance. I'm sorry. Uh, let's do this. Let's say what was the question? X equals. We're gonna do new hash and we're gonna redefine integer. We're gonna redefine hash on integer. Mm -hmm. What should we return? Five. Two. Yeah. Five. Okay. Like five. It's a. It's a nice. Mm -hmm. It's a good round number, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So then we should be able to say like p one dot or two dot hash, and that should return five, right? Yeah. Let's see that. Okay, five. That's cool. So now if we do x two, so okay, what are you saying here? So I think even if you do, uh, if you make it also equal to everything, mm -hmm. um, I think if we do this. Um, or I think if we do that and then print, sorry, and then print X three, I think it mm -hmm. doesn't use our implementation and this will return nil. Oh, let's check it. Oh, yeah. So, wow. Okay. But that's just okay. like a, a bonus we maybe get for implementation. <laughs> that's nice. So, so the, the, like, Takeaway from this is even if you monkey patch hash on integer, it does Ruby doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Even though it, even though we shouldn't. I, but if you I'm call dot happy. hash, it has to continue working the same. Sure, but I'm I'm not happy you brought this up because now I'm afraid <laughs> somebody's somebody's gonna like file a file an issue on Redmine and be like, oh, we can't. Like I overwrote hash. I overwrote yeah. a hash on integer and it's not working as expected. Yeah. No, please, nobody do that. <laughs> This is this is a secret for the cool stuff live stream. Do not tell anybody this. <laughs> Let's try. Okay, so I really want to know what if we do class foo hash, and I'm just gonna turn return like what? Actually, let's make a singleton. Let's mm -hmm. just do like lll equals object dot new. Okay, what happens if we do this? Actually, I'm gonna leave that. Like, I'm is will it raise an exception? I would hope for an exception. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's, that makes sense. And then if we do if we do uh to i this will work. I'm not sure. It might actually need to be Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. I like that. Cool. All right. So let's let's do this. Um actually, let me check where is how's my Okay, cool. I'm mostly up to date. We're mostly up to date. Let's do this. Uh Ufuk says if I you let's try to int. <laughs> oh, I didn't background it. Hold on. Let's try to Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. But that's that's the normal like I think that's just the normal like conversion process. Mm -hmm. So the, I think everything's fine. Yeah, I'm not mad I'm not mad about that. That's fine. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh let's see. Autogen. I'm just gonna build mini Ruby, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll take a look at the no. Okay, we'll go over here. So where do we want to start? Insns.dev. Um, yeah, let's start here, and okay. Maybe maybe we should start by sort of defining our instruction, making it you know barely work. Okay. Uh, and then, like I think we. I think it might be nice to start by like making it return five. Okay. Right. Like. It... Well, I think we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. So the steps we need to do. Uh, Ufuk is asking. Does that mean that two and two point five hash the same? I think. So. No. No, I don't think so. Um, so because hash, 
Um, like, I think if you were, well, if they don't hash the same, but if you return them as a hash, they then it'll the cast same. it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It applies the cast to whatever gets returned by it from the hash, the hash, the hash method. Okay. Uh, so I think we need to do, I think we need to do a couple steps. We need to introduce the instruction and then we need to, um, modify the people optimizer to actually use it like a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess let's do that. We'll do, um, and fortunately we have these ones already open cause Vim remembered that I was <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Let's add it here. So um, INS and s.def contains all of the contains the implementation for all of the instructions for YARV or for the for the virtual machine. So we're going to add a new instruction. And all you have to do to add a new instruction is just modify this file. Uh, the format of this file is you'll see here. This is this is just a thing at the top. You got to have this is the name of the instruction. So we're going to make what is it opt oops new array uh, hash. new array hash and this is this value here is uh the parameters for the instructions so it's going to be the number of items on the stack that we care about so this is like if we had an array of three this num this number will be three and we know to look at the top three values on the stack um this line here tells us how many things will be popped off the stack and we don't actually know. It's a dot, 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 because we don't know what the num is. We're going to pop num off the top. And then this line here is what's going to be returned. So we're going to push one value back onto the stack. So this is essentially pop variable, and then this is push one. Uh, so we'll do this. These we're not going to talk about because they're magic. Should we mm. talk about these? This one's magic. Let's not talk about Well, that. which one, leaf or... SP Inc. I guess we could talk about both. So leaf, yeah, leaf just means like we we have to call methods here. Is ba is basically so we need um, uh, when if we if the instruction is very simple, like if we're just putting a number onto the stack or or doing something that we know is very simple. And I think the main thing is it's not going to call code that you have written. Like it's not going to call other user code. Then we do a few optimizations. Um, like we skip, we skip incrementing things that we should be incrementing, and we'll just we just do it later. Yes. Um, so, but because um, you know people may have redefined hash on things, or um, it may be like we might get non-built-in objects inside of this array, and we need to call the hash on them. So, well, so we need to record that it's not a leaf. It's not just user code, right? It's basically mm -hmm. if we create a stack frame, pretty much. Right. So we have to know, like, yeah. does this RB fun call, does this, like, call out anything else? And that's what the leaf is saying. It's letting us know, like, oh, yeah, there, there is or isn't going to be a new stack frame here. This SP Inc., so when we, when we like, um, as we're, what, pushing and popping to the stack, we have to know, like, how many are we going to push or pop? And then this SP Inc. is basically, like, mm -hmm. telling us that. Yeah, because, because this is an instruction with, a dynamic number of uh, pops. Pops, yeah. Yes. So we say like we're gonna pop whatever that dynamic number is. We're gonna pop that um, one minus. I guess it's negative. Okay. Um, because we're we're putting one thing onto the stack and taking n things off. Yes. And Chris is asking sp being the stack pointer. Yes, sp is sp is the stack pointer. Yep. So this is the the amount that we're going to increment the stack pointer. Okay, should we, what should we do here? Just do like, actually, I'm gonna comment this out because I feel mm -hmm. like we're gonna steal from that. Yeah, um, val, val equals five. Let's do, let's do, oh int yeah, to, to num five. So when we push values onto the stack, they have to be Ruby values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the integer five, convert it to the Ruby representation of five, and push that onto the stack. So we'll always return the same value here. Uh, let's do, let's build. Uh, and for those of you watching at home, I'm only building mini Ruby here. Mini Ruby is essentially like it's Ruby, but it's with, it doesn't contain any of the stuff like Ruby gems or any of the extension libraries. 
And since we're only messing with, like, we're really only messing with language features today, we just need to, we just need to play with mini Ruby. Mm -hmm. So it's also helpful because when we inevitably break things, um, it doesn't need to, uh, will be able to build mini Ruby, whereas you sort of need a working yes. mini Ruby to build the rest of Ruby. Yes, so 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 the build process builds mini Ruby and then it uses mini Ruby to complete the build process. So if you mess up, like if you really, really mess up, like you can't which, build Ruby. Which we will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Inevitably we will really, really mess up. Okay, so we have we have a new instruction. We should have the new instruction. Can we actually see that? I don't think or I don't know of a way to see it without changing compile.c. I bet we can see oh, it. Oh, okay. Like this has, this is a thing, right? So dot include, include. Um, we could dot grep. Ah, I like grep. Uh, let's look for opt new array. Yeah. Okay. You're missing a, a oh, thing. Oh, thank you. And my yeah, head, so there's our instruction. My head is in the way, but you can see. No, you can't. Yeah, you can see it there. Not opt to new array hash right there. Okay. Yes. All right. So the instruction is the instruction is there, and we can now use it. So I guess let's go do that. Um, and th this is the end of where I did my homework. So yes, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at compile.c, but I'm hoping. <laughs> That because often like new array max and min are there are here. Yeah, we should be able. I mean, we should be able to just crib from min mm -hmm. and max. So let's. I guess let's find that new array min. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is perfect. Yeah, we can definitely steal from this. So if we have a, if we have a new array, so this is. Um, during the compile process, all of the instructions, like the instructions are turned into a linked list. And the people optimizer is just basically looking for patterns inside that linked list. And that's what we're doing. Like, that's what we're doing here is we're going to check for a new array followed by a hash call and then emit that special instruction. So that's, that's what they're doing here. It looks like, actually, it looks like we can just straight up copy this, copy this case statement, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, we do ID. We're gonna have to do ID hash, which I don't know if that exists. I'm sure it does. We think? yeah, we use. We have to call hash elsewhere, so I'm sure it exists. Hmm. No, it does not. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you mean ID each? Okay. Let's go find, I guess let's find like ID each uh, and then do whatever it does. Where did it, where did that go? So I know there's another, there's a weird file that defines the IDs. Mm -hmm. There's like an IDs.def. Is it? Um, it's not ID.h? Oh. Well, maybe. Um, oh, it says do not edit. No, I don't think so. So there's. Yeah, there's, um, oh, but did it tell us where it came I from? I think so, yes. Go to the top. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I don't. Um... Oh, no, that's ID table. Yeah, there's something somewhere that um, gives us the list of, uh, like there's a there's just a text file that has all the IDs that are, get built in. Let's see if we I'm can find cache it. isn't one of them. Oh, cause Rust bindings. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to fix that. I don't see it in here. It must be. I bet it's defined by some like weird macro thing. Oh, found it. Nice. It's I'm not surprised in here? cache isn't in here. Yeah, that is surprising. Huh. Um, but I'm going to put it next to max and min. Again, as we continue to copy paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, let's uh... Nice, it's working. Okay, I I think like now, I think it'll just work now. Well, yeah, for some definition of work. Yes, yes. Let's do so. Let's do mini Ruby minus dash dump 
Let's do dot hash. Mm -hmm. uh, it did not work. Mm, it didn't work because our array is not dynamic. But oh. if we were to do one and one plus one. There hash, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 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 Ah, yeah, yeah. Because it's got that. It's got the dupe array in there. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. So I wonder if this runs later than the um, thing that would be more helpful. Yeah. I'm not. I think we should not worry about it yeah. today. <laughs> okay. So, so for folks, for folks that are watching this, like we, since this, since this array only contained literals, uh, the optimizer, what it did is it said like, Hey, let's create an array now that contains all of these literals. And then when the instructions run, instead of, instead of like doing a bunch of pushes and then a new array on the stack from those values, it just copies, it just dupes this array. So it literally embedded the, this array one and two here into the instruction sequences. And then it just called dupe array on it. And the reason, the reason John and I are hemming and hawing <laughs> over this is because, because like we're, we're create we're literally allocating, allocating an array here and calling like calling hash on it, which is exactly the thing that we wanted to, we wanted to optimize. So that's why we are hemming and hawing though. I uh, think like, I, you know, minute, minute max is going to have the same problem. Yeah. It's, <laughs> which it's, is it's, like extra funny because, uh, let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah. One, two. Oops can't see that okay there we go two yeah look at that yeah. so, so the optimizer yeah <laughs> actually so while i was doing while i was doing prep work for this i ran into that i ran into that issue because of course the first thing i tried was like one and two and then it didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> but i think like maybe it doesn't matter because if yeah. you have like if you have a literal if you have arrays with just literals inside of them and then you're calling min on that like what is your don't do that mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know what the min is just, just yeah put it in. <laughs> well and that's like i think we are sort of like running into a thing where we want to like we're, we're optimizing things because we expect them to occur in real code yes. and i think we're sort of optimizing hash in hopes that it occurs more often in real code uh, Ufuk is saying you could even compute the min max hash at compile time for those for those arrays and i think Ufuk is wrong but I mean, maybe you could, but what if somebody monkey patches min and max? <laughs> it, well, or integer com integer comparison. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's yeah. awful. Why would yeah. you say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could. Okay. Yes, you could. You indeed maybe, could. Maybe you want your, your dot sort to go in the other direction. <laughs> How else would you do that? Very important, very important production code. Okay, so we should be able, actually, we should be able to see this um, go like, like we should be able to do class foo def initialize uh, a b, and I'm gonna do Seattle style here today because I'm driving. Oops. Mm -hmm. That seems good. And we'll do def hash at at a at b dot hash and our the instruction that we implemented is always going to return it's five. always going to return five so if we do like um oh whoops i forgot an end here uh if we do five or if we do foo dot new dot hash we should see that print out of five let's try it oh, right i need to actually type correctly uh let's do Hi. Um, all right. Mm. New Ruby test.rb. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, great. So it's it's executing it's executing our instruction. So let's um, fix the instruction mm -hmm. then. Well, the one funny thing is that this like sort of would work, um, but it would be very inefficient because we call. <laughs> EQL all the time. Everything, everything collides. Now, yeah. everything that does this returns five for the hash. So, <laughs> uh, okay. I guess we should do. I think we should basically just copy what, like, copy this. Essentially, implement a new op new array hash. 
So I think there's two ways we could go about it. One is that we, so, um, so because uh, insns.def is sort of in this weird format, it's sort of, it's mostly C, but then it gets um, sort of pre-compiled by, by Ruby, it gets pre-processed. Um, we move a lot of code into instruction helper.c. Yeah. Um, so one option is we, we put this in instruction helper.c, but the other is I think we are going to need to base this really closely off the existing implementation of array hash. And maybe it would make sense to put it in array.c. Oh, because, yeah. Because like sort of have a, you know, please hash this range of, yeah. of value pointer Let's kind check. of thing. Yeah, let's check the implementation in Array. Maybe we can figure out what to do from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. RB Airy hash seems public. No, it is not. It is static. That is interesting. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, so we'll, we're going to need to make something public, probably. Yeah. Um, so my thinking was, um, most of this is is fairly here. straightforward, but maybe we could. So currently, this is looping over an array, yeah, and doing a reference on each on each index. If instead, mm. maybe we just extracted the pointer. Pointer, we yeah, that, yeah. Make mm. a new method that um, that does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so it's essentially we kind of want we kind of want like um, what do we call it RB array hash values, and it's gonna take uh, long len mm -hmm. and uh, value star, I guess elements, mm -hmm. something like that. Does that seem okay? Yeah, and then it returns that seems okay. a value. Something like this. I guess let's refactor. Why don't we refactor this guy to use this one? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do. Okay. And what do we want to do? We want this. So hash start is just going to be our length here. And then, oh, interesting. It's using it twice. Hm. Len, okay, and then what do we need to do? What do we want to do here? Here we want to do elements. elements I. Oops, elem, elements i, and then here is fine, right? Yeah, that seems legit-ish. So here we should be able to do return, um, and I already forgot the function name. <laughs> Let's see. R array len array, and then how do we get access to the pointer? Um, I think there might. I don't remember there. So one of one of the issues is like I think there's something that's frequently used, but it does something weird in some case. Yeah. So if it's an if it's an array stored in the transient, right. heap, we probably don't want to like. If you call the wrong thing, it'll evict it from the transient heap, and we probably don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So we need we need the special thing. Let's dig into array ref. I think const pointer. I think that's the one we want. Okay. Actually. Array const right. pointer. Let's check it. Array const pointer. Yeah, yep. that would that works great. Yep, that's the one we want. Okay. Should I use the macro? Yes, probably. Okay. So r array. Oops. Um, no, 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 no. Sorry. I think you want it. Yeah. Further. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R array. No. Let's spell that correctly. Array const ptr array. And then yeah. that seemed good. Yeah. I think that'll work. Let's check this. I guess let's try building make mini Ruby. Uh, no. Why is it mad? Um, uh, we it's const const correctness, so we need to ah const. Yep. We need to say that we're not going to modify it. Yes. I think I also spotted um, this line does something funny. It it references that method um, down there, but I think it's just to get a a 
a value to distinguish it. Do you want me to <laughs> go into what this is? Oh my goodness, I just noticed that. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no! Okay, yes, do... All right, John, so... please, please describe for our viewers what exactly is going on here. <laughs> so, I think what this is doing um, is, uh, so this is, so the way hash, the, we build the hashes is they're sort of like, it's sort of like a chain of math you do on mm -hmm. on an integer. So you start with something and then you multiply it by some huge prime number and then XOR or add stuff into it and do that over and over. One of the values being added in is the address, address. of the C method that uh, defines our B array hash. Um, and that's, I think, I think there's sort of two purposes, two potential purposes to this. One is, um, it's random. It's just a number. Yeah. Well, one one is it's just like a number to di differentiate hashing an array from hashing a hash or anything else. Um, but the other is that if we have address space layout randomization, it's yeah. actually a random number. Yep. Um, and that's nice and convenient because we would like our hashes to be random. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It makes a, it makes sense. It's just really funny because. You don't really notice this here. It looks like it's just like some variable or something, but it's actually a function pointer to mm -hmm. itself, which is. Mm -hmm. But you could imagine that not fun. being there or yeah, being yeah. like the number Rand. five. Yeah. Or five. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Let's try this. Hey. Great. Okay. Cool. So we should be able to do like. So now normal... we need. Yeah. We need, now just I think need to call that. Hold on a sec. I want to do. Um, Ufuk says I guess that also ensures that hash dot hash is different from array dot hash. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should be able to just do like. Just want to do something here. Hey, P one two. Oh no. No, that'll work. Two. Dot hash. So it now it's using our new yeah. Our it new doesn't jam. it yeah. doesn't crash. It doesn't crash. That's the important thing here. We do. could do dot itself dot hash if we want to test this in the future. Mm. Okay. So we have actually where, where were we? All right. So we have this function. Now we want to call it and actually let me. I'd like to potentially. I'd like to upstream this. So let's like put the comments in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now we need to call it. All we got to do is call this, right? Yeah. Well, we uh, declare it and call it. So okay. let's copy the signature into somewhere. The header file. This should be an internal thing, right? Yeah. Internal, yep. All right. Is there an array? I don't know. Do you have, I don't know where files are. I just use a fuzzy finder. Is there an array in here? There's no array in here. We could put it in, we could just put it wherever. And then you can fix it before upstreaming it. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, internal array dot h. Internal array, there we go, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, internal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we want, did you copy the signature? I think so. Okay. Just slap, no. Oh, you yeah. did. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we should be able to just call this straight from the, straight from insns.def now, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay, we'll do this, and then monkey patching is going to break, and then we'll have to fix that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do that. All right. So let's see, we'll do, and I already forgot the name of the function. <laughs> Air, <laughs> area hash values. So we just need to do uh, val equals this, and len is going to be num. Mm -hmm. Ooh, elements is going to be interesting. Well, it's just uh, stack adder from top num. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Num. Boom. That ought to do it. 
Yeah, I think that should do it. I think that'll do it, yes. So stack adder from top, what it does is it, it should take the stack pointer and then given some value, it'll rewind that, that amount and give you the address there. So we should wind back up n elements or however many elements we care about. So let's try this. I'm gonna get rid of that one. This seems encouraging. Okay, cool. Let's try. It. So now we should see, like, if we do. Uh, we'll have to one change plus it. One. one plus one, yeah. Yeah. So if we do this, it should hit our optimized instruction and also work still. But let's. Um, let's... Do you want to? Could could I test something? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Go in... for it. Could you move to your terminal? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to use. Uh, it's wanted... it's T-Box, control B, N. Oh, okay. You got it. So I use the same key bindings you do. OK. Uh, no, I use control A. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, but I, I wanted to check uh, whether they this works the same. Does our implementation match? Oh, that's a good, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. And, and it does. It seem does, to... yes, yes. But I. I, we don't know if it's, well, I guess it does work. Yeah. I, I'm still going to put my printf in here. Okay. That's, yeah. I want my printf. So we'll know we got in here when we see greeting mm. to, my, to mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, yes, greetings. All right. But, but. <laughs> We have an issue where if we do uh, class array def hash and then ox neat, which is unfortunately not hex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put yeah. this in here. Eat seems. Wait, t is not hex. We can cafe. Yeah, let's do cafe. I Oops. like cafe. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you drive. No, no, all yours. <laughs> okay, so now if we do if we do p like one, oh, we got we have to do one comma like one, one, plus, one. plus one because only our our instruction our optimized instruction is not respecting monkey patches, but normal array dot hash will respect the monkey patch. So if we compare these two, like. They should print out the same value, but they mm -hmm. will not. So let's look at that. Oh, it still has, it still has a greeting in there. Let's just do that real quick. Yeah. So they're printing out, they're printing out different values, which is not good. We need to, mm -hmm. we need to take into account monkey patching because that is a thing that people can do. Uh, okay. I guess this is probably where we want the VM opt stuff. Probably. So, yeah, let's go take a look at how opt new array min works because it has to take into account monkey patching if somebody changes the min implementation. Okay. Yep. We can prop. Oh. Refinements. Ah, uh, so we might. We'll we'll probably have to pass. The. EC, the execution context in, but yeah. it looks like other than that, this is fine. Yeah, I think I think all we really need to do is like this, basically what this is doing, but I think mm -hmm. our if statement's gonna be simpler. Yeah. Um, I also think, so this is checking, um, the oh, way man. op new array min works is it's checking from a list of uh, basic operations, which is sort of a list of things Ruby has decided are important. And if you override them, it has to take a slower path. Um, and hash is probably not currently In one that of those. List. Yes, yeah. yes. So BOP's BOP, short for basic operation, they're monkey patches that we specially detect. And it looks, yeah. So I mean, there's, add... there's no way hash should be in here because we didn't even have ID hash. No. So now we need to add this. Is this all we have to do to add a new bot? No, we need to. Um, there's somewhere. 
there's something in method.c or something like that. There's somewhere, um, this is probably enough for, like we could cheat. <laughs> Why don't we make it work with this? Um, and then we can add the detection after we make our method work. Yeah, um, yeah, let's there's, do that. There's a place, it's not, I don't think it's too hard, but there's a bunch of macros that expand into, um, it has like a table where it keeps track of what the method should be and what it actually is. Yes, yes. Okay, let's make this work. We only have five minutes. I don't okay. think we'll, like, <laughs> I don't think we're going to finish this. <laughs> when we were chatting earlier, I was so hopeful. I'm like, this should be this very easy. <laughs> And then mm -hmm. it turns out, no, okay. I mean, I think we've like, we've succeeded in some way. It's not yes. like, it's not finished, but I think we've proved the concept. Yeah, at least. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Bob Hash, actually, where do we do? Uh, who sets the bops? It's in the, it's when you define methods, the bops get, the bops get bopped, right? But I think it records when they get redefined rather than when they don't. Is this going to work? I don't think this don't is going to work. I mean, if it doesn't, if it calls the else case, then we'll at least have tested our else case. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so I think we want our array hash values. Uh, yep. And return that. Uh, and then we probably need to fix this one. So I think that's oh. the same, but we want to call hash. Hash. Yeah. That yep. should work. That ought to work. Yeah. Okay. So now we need to call this method. So this is this is if if hash is array pound hash is not monkey patched use the optimized call otherwise we fall back to we fall back to the slow path here mm -hmm. so let's see we also need to let's grab this did we do we change in here nope we gotta do this so we, we need to actually call it hash okay mm -hmm. oops I typed wrong. Yeah, that wasn't me. No, that was me. <laughs> okay, so we're hoping that just that change will detect that we have monkey patched array, and we will see see the two the two methods. But let's check or the two values. Uh, well, it's not it's not going to work because no, we need. Work. Well, let's, what do we have, two minutes? Um, there's something like... Oh. Oh, those are just checking them. They're not setting, they're not setting the bops. Hmm. Where is it? VM.c? Ah, uh, See yeah. that one? That looks pretty truthy, yeah. Ah! Uh, Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my normal Vim, if you just type Vim in my terminal, it opens Mac Vim, which is not helpful for John. So yeah. <laughs> we talked about this earlier and I forgot. <laughs> uh, Vim, did I have one open here? Yeah, yeah. here we go. Okay. Um, what was it? It was like Bop. Bop something. Bop. Oh. Yeah. So ah, here we go. Yeah, we got to do this. Yes, I remember this. We could probably find the min and max one again. Yeah, where is that? There we go. Yeah, love copy paste. It's <laughs> so good. Uh, oh, op hash, and then hash. That had to do it, right? Yeah, I think that should work. We got one minute left. Let's do this. Please work. Please work. Yes. Oh my goodness, it worked. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> we Just did in it. Time. We, yes, we detected we detected monkey patches. Wait, does that mean that we are just-in-time compilers? Yes. <laughs> That's what that means. 
<laughs> that's what that means. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch back to, since we got that working, I'm going to switch back to Keynote now with you, John. Okay. Um, thank you for being on, John. It was a, it was a pleasure hacking, hacking with you. Thank you, everybody else, for joining, and I will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.